working working schedules out and, and things. So I happen to uh, have it. We just hit just right. So I appreciate everybody everybody coming out. We're debating doing it outside. We'll see how the, the horse has been in, inside an auditorium before. We'll see how he does. Uh, but uh, he's a wild horse out of Oregon, and uh, I, uh, I I supervise the wild horse. Inmate program, wild horse and burrow inmate program. We got a lot of donkeys. Arizona does, so we've got a lot of burros, and and they they train a lot different than horses. So it's kind of a learning curve for for me. Uh, somebody once said horses. One of the great things about training horses is they they remember very well and they forgive everything. Burros remember very well and forgive nothing. That's the that's the big big and, and mules for those of you that have have mules. So. Uh, so I've been uh, supervising the program. I actually pastored for 30 years, but I was raised on a ranch. Um, where's Ken? We went to high school together. Uh, actually, uh, we went to high school in Jerome. How you been to Jerome? <coughs> the, the school was new when Ken. Uh, <laughs> it was, it was, that's the, wasn't really. Uh, so anyway. I, Raised with ranching, and then uh, and I went into law enforcement then ministry. So, uh, uh, and so I got back when I got hired at the prison. We were just starting the program uh, six years ago. We had no horses, and just uh, you know, so I was getting things going. And, and uh, we, uh, I don't know if any of you seen some of the some of the documentaries. USA Today did the biggest documentary, and uh, it, it went. Uh, I got a call from the producer, uh, and he said, "Can you log on to Facebook?" He said, "It, it was on all of our stations." And he said, now they put it on Facebook. And he said, we're getting all these, you know, questions. And so I thought, well, you know, I'd log on to some of the comments. And there were 80,000 views when I logged on. So I thought, man, this thing could hit a hit 100,000. And uh, so next day I logged on, it was like right at 200,000. And then it hit a million. Then it hit 2 million. And so, wow. so, so I called the producer, and I had known him for, for a while, and I said, uh, I, I, I've, got a, I've got a complaint about your, your program. He goes, what's that? I said, well, you, you've made me look a lot better than I am. And now I have to try to live up to your height. He paused for a minute. He goes, I just need to remind you that in the media, we can make you look a lot worse than you are. So you just need to be thankful. So, that's good. <laughs> so we had a, a, another documentary aired, aired a short one aired last week on CBS. And... Uh, Got Animal Planet uh, coming in. I got uh, BBC and, and CBC, Canadian Broadcast and British Broadcasting, coming in in two weeks. So the the stories of the inmates' lives being changed is really the the key. And I see everything transformation as being spiritual, and that's the way I approach it. Now I I don't preach to the guys, but they watch how you live, and they know I'm a Christian. Everybody, you know, and uh, and, and I do Cowboy Church inside. Uh, the prison complex. So I'll, I'll take a horse sound system right on the prison yard. You got this sea of orange around you, and, and then I can preach. But out in the program, we just we train horses. But what I'll do with training horses, I will say, okay, uh, here's a life lesson from this horse. So we, we'll work with a horse, and uh, and so what can we learn from this round pen, whatever? So now what I have them do is say, okay, I want you guys to give me life lessons. What can you learn? Well, those are often pretty spiritual principles. Uh, getting the past behind you, uh, overcoming obstacles, dealing with fear, um, kingdoms in conflict. Uh, had 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 the horse come in. I did a did a life lesson. The horse, and, and I'll show you in a minute. The horses have a, a freeze mark on their neck. And uh, so, how you guys uh, uh, looked at one? Said, "What's your ABC number? Inmate number?" He rattled it off. How many times have been in prison? He said three times. They give you a new number when you came in the last time. He said, nope, same number. I said, so you're just like this horse. And that number can stay with you for the rest of your life, and it can place a value on you if you let it. This horse, this will place a value on the horse if we let it. But this horse has the privilege of exceeding the expected value or the predetermined value. And I said, when you get out, man, you can... Just exceed that that value. So it's these little things. One of the things that I tell them all the time: so you got this horse. So get this horse in. Come along, great. It's 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 radically different. Came in wild, dangerous, and now they're 
not just leading it around, but they're on it. They're going over obstacles, all kinds of things. I've got a seven acre obstacle course. So I tell them, I said, take this horse, all this change, and let's say in uh, a couple of weeks you, th you think, you know, I'm just going to take it back, let it hang out with the old herd for a month or so. Probably misses them. What's going to happen? You lose everything you gain because the horse can revert back. So I was talking to an inmate the other day. I said, so he said, I'm out. I'm Mr. Helm, I'm getting out. Uh, he told me it went, and we've been talking a little bit about it. And I said, what, so what are you going to do when you get out? He said, I'm going to look for a different herd. <laughs> so uh, so, uh, so there. Catching on to, to some of that, so we're gonna we're gonna bring Starbuck in, and uh, uh, Starbuck is as I mentioned he's out of out of Oregon. He uh, is uh, I, I I'll talk a little bit about about him and his his uh, how I ended up with with him. He's a nine year old. Yeah, I took the, I, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I took the, he had a, a, a manure bag on his tail, and uh, I took that off because he was just, he was very embarrassed, and uh, so, uh, so this is Starbuck, he, uh, it's right there, buddy, uh, so this is when I know he's nervous when he, when he paces like this, because he'll usually get planted, so we'll, we'll do a couple of things here, okay, hips over. There we go. Good for you. So he came out of, uh, as I mentioned, came out of Oregon. He's nine. This is the freeze mark, and the freeze mark I can tell his uh, age when he was born, what what area he came out of. And so there's some, some things there that uh, that uh, I can tell. We'll just we'll just let him go around in circles here. Good for you. Yeah, so we can do that. Uh, so. When, I, when I'm doing uh, when I'm doing cowboy church, uh, I'll, I'll do cowboy church in Florence, and uh, uh, once a month, and then do cowboy church at uh, uh, Country Thunder. Have you been? Or you, you don't have to admit if you've been to, been to Country Thunder. <laughs> I do uh, I do cowboy church out at Country Thunder, and uh, there it's about we end up with about a farmland that goes from nobody to thirty thousand people. And uh, we're right in the middle. Oh, that's it. You just wanted to, you didn't want to be in front. <laughs> I got you. Let's see how, let's see how this works. So, uh, so um, I, I ended up getting uh, getting Starbucks. Anybody want to guess how much Starbucks cost me? How much? A dollar. No, way more than that. <laughs> Hundred, good. You're close. So he cost me twenty-five because he's reassigned. So most most of the wild horse will cost one twenty-five. It's, it's just uh, I say cost. That's just an adoption fee. So technically they 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 don't cost anything. So we'll, uh, we'll start working with him. And, and here, so here's what uh, I had a buddy of mine. This <coughs> incidentally, uh, uh, Rainsman. And Circle Y are a sponsor, so they just said, you pick out whatever saddle you want, and uh, we'll, uh, we want to give you a saddle. So, and so the, the, the saddle maker made me a little thing for preaching. So I got a little thing for my Bible and, and stuff. So I want to talk about your, your, your value. Get, get your rear away from me. Let's see. see two horses rears up here all of a sudden. Okay, that was a joke there. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> it's going to settle down here probably tomorrow morning. Um, so, on on determining your value, and I want to relate this to to horses and specifically to, to Starbuck. What what is it that determines? Our, our value. What determines how much you're worth? Do you, there are a lot of things. Go ahead. Honesty, loyalty. Uh, honesty, loyalty does. Um, 
I, I think on a, on, a, on a better level, it does. Society, how does society determine your, your value? How you look. How you look. Yeah, that's huge. Work ethic. Work ethic, yep. Money. Him, or, or as well as you, right? So health, that would that would be that would be one thing. Uh, a, a lot of things that, that determine a horse's value determine ours. One is is pedigree. So this this horse, if he was a dock bar, um, if he had you know some sort of a great reining or roping bloodline, he'd he'd be worth more. Um, a number of things that, that society has, or just in the horse world, there is that determines value. He probably just wants to be by you guys. <laughs> um, so, I'm going to cut you off here. <laughs> See how long that lasts. Uh, he, he, he figured out he's bigger than me, um, and, and that just wasn't a good day. So, so for us, you know, your, 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 your looks, your pedigree, if you will, um, rear over, nope, uh, I, I'll show you what he's doing, it's really kind of cool. Uh, so what I do with him is I'll, I'll, I'll start all the horses this way, I'll get them, that's why he's going in a circle, that's, that's the way I'll start them. Let's give him one in a circle once I get my hands on him. And then I'll connect this rein right here to the horse's rear. So I'll just touch this rein, rear, go over. Okay, rear, go over. And oh, you got, got your boot there. So so then once they, once the rear starts going over, then then I'll start building in little little cues. What I like about this is he doesn't like to do it. It's boring for him. So he can kind of get settled down just by saying, if you want to just walk around, then uh, I'm going to make you walk more. So, right? So uh, he was trying to do something that I'll, I'll, I'll show you in, in a minute. So what determines your value? One is, is, is who you are. And who you are it also involves whose you are. So who, who you are determines your value. For the horses, it could be pedigree. Oh, okay, I'll just do this. The horse, it could just be pedigree. Uh, or it could be really in, in any number of, of things as far as who. One would be, one would be ownership. If, uh, if you uh, get a horse from, I've got some friends that are just phenomenal trainers, train circles around me. And if I were to want one of their horses, uh, it, just because they have it, it's, it's, it's worth more. I was out in, in Nashville riding a, a, a friend of mine's horse. We were doing raining, and uh, we were, I was riding that horse for a week. The next day, a person came in and bought that horse for $30,000. Uh, and uh, and he, this this guy sold one the year before for two hundred fifty thousand. So so if if he says you know this is uh, uh, this is a horse that I've I've, I've trained and uh, uh, I own. Nope, nope. You got the wrong cue. Here, here here's what he's doing. It's really cool. So the older I get, the the more I I, I don't need it yet, but I, I I may. So if I'm out in the hills. And, and I've got to get on him, and there's a rock over here, I can go. Wow. And get him to help me come over to it. So he just helps me out. So he thinks that's what I'm asking him to do now. So, uh, uh, so who's, who you are involves uh, who's, who's you are. So who, who this horse is, this horse, as I mentioned, is, 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 a, is a Mustang. So this right here tells me he was foaled in, oh, he's foaled in 2008. I think I told somebody 2009. He's from uh, Oregon. And th this would be a tag that goes on their neck with the last fourth. It's all angle codes. So this will stay with them for the rest of their life. And you have people say, well, 
That's that's a Mustang. They and then then the the the, the stereotype uh, starts. So that's just a, that's just a Mustang. <coughs> and Mustangs are. I've had people say they're always wild. But there there are certain things that that will that will label us. And. Uh, No, I'd ask you to come this way. So, he will. I, I, I have trained him because we, we do training for border patrol. So I have him trained where if he's cued, he will push people. And hopefully only if he is cued will he push people. So um, here's what uh, Romans 8.15 says. It says, you did not receive the spirit of, of slavery or bondage again to fear, but you've received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Uh, who you are radically changes when you, when you receive Christ. Radically changes. Who you are is, is, is not based on some external thing or a, or a pedigree. Uh, who you are is, is based on, on whose you are. Uh, I, I was, uh, uh, a lot of people didn't know this with, with our, our family in, in Cottonwood, but uh, in, in our whole, whole family there were a number of brothers and sisters, and out of, the, out of the five, I was the only one that wasn't adopted out. Uh, so, uh, so I went to grandparents on their, on their farm and ranch that I ran away when I was about 15 and, and never went back there and I ended up back with my, my dad. But adoption really meant something. It's really the reason I ran away. I wasn't abused or anything. I, I hit about 13, 14. I started thinking, man, nobody wanted me. I didn't realize, hey, that may not be a bad thing that you didn't get adopted. So, so I was in the military, uh, 18 years old, and I was sitting on my, I'd just become a Christian. I was sitting on my bunk, I was reading my Bible, and I came to this, Romans 8, 15, and I sat there and started crying, 18 years old, because God was saying, I want to, you know, you like that, huh? Uh, so, uh, you, so we're adopted, but we're also purchased. He said, you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold, but with the, what, precious blood of Christ. We're redeemed with, with perishable things, is, is one, one way of putting it. You weren't redeemed with corruptible things, perishable things, but you were redeemed with the precious blood of Christ. You were purchased, high price. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. High price for you. So, so th th that should really make us think when we, when, when we talk about value. We talked about what determines your value. Let's look at some of the negatives. What you didn't get. Who you aren't. Mistakes you made. Uh had a, a, a couple in, uh, in Oklahoma I was talking with, and they had uh, moved in together. She had gotten pregnant, and uh, the pastor of the church said, you can't, you can't keep attending the church when you're living together. Um, I, 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 can, I can maybe see what, uh, what he was wanting to accomplish uh, but at the same time, I would say maybe you, maybe you can't do certain things. But uh, we're going to have to get you situated right there. Can you stand there by me? So they said, okay, he's really right. We need, to, we need to make this right. We need to get married. So then they went to him and said, Pastor, we, we agree with what you said. We've decided to get married. He said, well, I, I can't marry you. You're living together. So I'm thinking that some of that, well, what, the, what does that do? It puts a value on us. Say, so you know what? Man, I'm pretty worthless. And we, we, we come back to Scripture where God says, one, you're adopted, two, you're purchased, and I will take responsibility for helping you become who you need to be. I'll get him over here. There we go. For two minutes. All right. So, this horse was both. 
I filled out adoption paperwork on him, and I, what I did for the, those of you guys that work with horses, he, he is a little bit, uh, he'll, he'll chomp at the bit, and so I put a hackamore on him, so you have a little less control with a hackamore. Um, so you're adopted and purchased. Uh, Romans 8 talks a lot about the, the fact that the, the, the old man, uh, old things are passed away, the, the old man, the Bible talks about old things are passed away. Uh, the, the other is, is, is what you have will place a value on you. Uh, what you have, uh, or we think it does. So he says, well, I, I, I have a, I have a, this kind of car, I have this kind of house, I have this, I have that. What you, what you have. What you have in you and <clears throat> on you. By what you have in you, knowledge will place a, a, a value on you. This horse has, as you can see, does circles pretty well. <laughs> okay? But he'll also get hips over. What I like to do is say, okay, circle, circle. Then I like to say, hips go over, hips hurry up. Hips go over, hips hurry up. So, so that's, that's here. It's not, not training the feet. Um, another thing, what, what, what I do when, when we're talking about training horses and, uh, of course, training inmates, everything I do on the ground, I want to translate to the saddle because I have found I would rather be, I would rather be on the ground wishing I was in the saddle than in the saddle wishing I was on the ground and about ready to be on the ground. Um, so here, here's what I'll do there. I'll get him to flex the pole. So if you're not a horse person, this is the pole. Between the ears is the pole. So, so I'll get him to flex the pole. And flex means that head comes around. So once the head gets around about where the shoulder is, then he'll say, okay, that's not too hard to do. I can, I can get my, my nose around where the shoulder is. Then I will say, now I want you to go forward. I can't do that. So he will get frustrated. It takes a little while. Eventually, he'll do this. He'll, he'll have his nose over here. He'll try to get away from it by doing this. His, his right leg will go over his left or vice versa. And then I'll come back and say, flick up, Mr. Ed. Nobody has any. You are amazing. you got your right foot over your left foot. Then I'll go to the other side. And you got to train the other side of the horse. You, know, you always have two horses to train, the right brain, left brain. Go to the other side and say, see if this side figures it out. And you go, okay, i got it figured out. And then that way when I get in the saddle, I have a, a language. So here, here's what I can do. So if I, if, if I come over here, watch it. Well, you can't really see his right leg, but watch, just watch his, his motion here. So just no pressure at all on the, on the brain. So I'll come over here, say, can you flex the pole here? Say, sure. And then he just starts going sideways. So when I'm in the saddle, what I can do is just get him to flex the pole, get shoulder work. And uh, so what he has in him is knowledge. Um, then, of course, I can get him to come this way. You're a good boy. Um, in the wild, he, he would be in a room with 100 predators. So, you know, I know they're talking about potluck, barbecue, uh, <laughs> and they look hungry, and, and suddenly I come in. So, um, so, this is what he has in him, is knowledge. I will keep building knowledge in him, but what I put on him is important. I've got a, uh, let's say a $25 horse. I've got a $1,800 saddle on a $25 horse. Does that make any sense? It really does, because he's not a $25 horse. And, and, and if, for those of you that have horses or have had horses, the investment is not the purchase price anyway. The investment is uh, he, he likes to eat hay and take you back up. Nope, nope, back up. Nope, nope, back up. There we go. Um, here's what, what God has, uh, as soon as I get you where I want you to be at, What you have 
Here's what Isaiah 61 says. He says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's, he's, he's anointed me. He said, and he goes on to say, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise, the spirit of heaviness. In other words, he's saying, man, I'm doing a, a, a great exchange. Uh, beauty for ashes, oil of joy for mourning. If he, and doing, he's more comfortable doing outdoor cowboy church than he is in anything else, uh, literally anything else. He will fall asleep when I'm sitting on him. And people will say, well, people will say he fell asleep. I'll tell them, I said, no, he's just praying. His eyes are being closed. closed. That they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. So, now, he, he, will, he will follow me. all over, but just won't stand still. There we go. See if we can, don't, don't do what I think you're going to do. Don't do it. Um, just, you're just testing me. Um, what, what, what do you have that you've exchanged? What did you need to exchange? Beauty for ashes. Uh, talk about who you are and whose you are. Once you become, become a child of God, old things are passed away, all things become new. And so, so what, you, what you have in you and what you have on you, uh, God will start putting his character in you. And, and he will put, like, I, I took this saddle, put a, put a saddle on a horse, uh, that maybe some people say, you know what, he's just a, he's just a whatever. No, he's not. He's, I, I, I see him doing a lot more. Uh, this last year, we were in. Uh, last year, we were in a couple of uh, the schools and uh, cowboy churches. He's been. He's done. He's done country thunder five times. Done Texas thunder. Uh, and uh, we last year packed two elk out on him. Uh, so I don't see him as a uh, just a twenty-five dollar horse. We'll just, we'll just find a junky saddle and, and put on it on him. Let's see if you can get right there. Can you park there? Good. So the 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 last thing of the of the three. Uh, is is what you carry. What, what the horse? It, it, it all really doesn't matter that much if if the horse isn't willing to carry something. Um, what um, this actually might might help you settle down a little. The So what, what he carries, hey, I can see everybody better. Uh, it, it all really depends on what he carries. And, and that, will, that will determine value as, as well. What he carries, think about, think about your own life. What, what, what is it that you, that you carry? Well... If you, if you think about all your past, your history, you're probably carrying a lot of regrets, some successes, some regrets. You're carrying your identity that may be good, may be bad. You're carrying other people's stuff, whether you like it or not. Other people's hurts, failures, of what other people did to you. And if we're not careful, we'll start carrying a lot of trash. And we will think that's all we're worth. We'll just load ourselves down with other people's trash, our own trash. When old things are passed, when all things become new, we, we start carrying amazing, amazing things. You know what the, the, the biblical word for uh, 
glory, the glory of the Lord, is the weight, the kabod, the glory of the Lord. But it's also called the burden of the Lord. So what, what, what this horse does when I'm on his back is really the, the most important. If I, if I come in just a little bit on this side, and don't even, don't even kick him or anything, just come in a little bit on the left side, and he's going to go right. If I come in a little bit here, he's going to go this way. If we're, if we're traveling out and I, I, I lean back, do it much here, but he's going to back up. So that's what's important. What is it that God wants you to He wants you to carry His presence into every situation. It will change your value. It will radically change your value. Say, so, you know what, I've, I've got, uh, I don't know about you, but you know, sometimes family events are great. Sometimes, you know, family events are great, but oh, cousin so and so is coming. Uh, <laughs> you know what, I'm just going to carry Jesus in the midst of this next, next gathering. Um, work. Whatever it is, we, we, we carry the very presence of God into unbelievable situations to see Him radically, radically change uh, people's lives. What you carry is important, and, and it all will lead, God will put His thoughts in your mind so that you can carry His glory and His person into situations. God will put uh, His value on you, and He will tell you, You're mine. You're mine. I have, I have redeemed you. I have purchased you. I have adopted you. You're born again. How much more identity can you get? Um, and what, what will happen is we will start to realize that all these things that we think identify us and give us value just fall to the wayside. Because what God says is I will place my value, I'll place my, my spirit inside you. That's huge. Place my value on you. The person of Jesus, when, when we talk about, talk about being, being born again, um, it's not just some, some term. We're, old things really are passed away. This horse is born again. This horse uh, only bucked with me once and happened to be in the snow and the saddle slipped and and I slipped. <laughs> but, and, and then I went and caught him and figured out what happened. And he carried me for the next four hours. I, I didn't say, you know what? Starbuck, you made a mistake, buddy. So I'm never going to trust you with me again. We worked through it. Got back on him and said, you know what? I, I, I think I see what happened. And we're going to go ahead and do what we need to do. Find your purpose. God, the, the, you will not find your purpose until you start yielding to the, the weight, if you will, of what you're carrying, the right thing of what you're carrying. You start yielding to God, you'll find your purpose. I'll tell you a little story. Um, you know, I'll sit on him and tell the story. Lute, Country Thunder. The owner of Country Thunder, uh, the leadership, uh, owns a number of, uh, of venues and uh, Graham Central Stations and, and uh, I had the had the privilege. I would, they actually asked me, "Could you do a country? Could you do a cowboy church in Country Thunder?" I said, "So I'll, I'll get out there with horses and I'll do." Uh, a couple of years ago, it rained, so I said, "Let's do it on Saturday." The owner said, "That's that's fine. So we'll do it. We'll do it on Saturday." Well, then I was out in the mall area and uh, I had people walk up saying, "Look for the cowboy church tomorrow." So I said, "Well." So I went to the owner and said, "Well, I think we'll do it on Sunday too." He said this. He said. Randy, I don't care if you do cowboy church every day. That's fine with me. This is an environment that is extremely, extremely secular. And it comes down to, to, to this whole idea of helping people find purpose. And, and, and I, I talk about, uh, about Christ, him changing our lives. And it, it, it is one of the most amazing things to me. It, the, this won't surprise many of you. The flack I get... Never been from people out there. Church people. Yeah. You should not be out there. Yeah. And my response is that's exactly where I should be. I am not out there doing everything they're doing. But if we're not going to go into, to, we, we, we can't shine a light in darkness. 
if we never get the light over where darkness is. Doesn't mean that we condone or we live there. You understand? I hope everybody understands what I mean, but I, I mean finding ways to radically change our culture. If people say, you know what, those wild horses, they're just wild. You should leave them alone. No, I want to give them a chance to have the best life possible. Yeah. And uh, inmates, uh, if you get a chance, uh, if, you, if, you, if you Google the program or you do a search of the program, Wild Horse Inmate Program Arizona, a bunch of, I, I run into documentaries that I've never seen before because some of the media outlets will have bits and pieces of other ones or, or will do. I, I did Cowboy Church at Country Thunder and I did not know it. But there was uh, one of the stations was there and they had it on their, on their program. I, but I'd never seen it for like two years later. Uh, so, but if you get a chance, you'll, you'll, what you'll hear is a lot of the inmates uh, telling their story of how they were, they were changed. So here's what I'll tell the inmates. I said, I'm never going to give a horse more of a chance than I give you. I want to take a horse in and let them uh, have an opportunity to change their life. I'm not going to treat you with, with less than that. We have guys in that are in for anything from theft to murder. And I've had guys come up and say, Mr. Charlie, if anything happens out here, I've got your back. I'll tell you, in prison, that is not common. Okay? Anything happens out here, Mr. Helm, I'm heading to <laughs> uh, go this way. There you go. So, see, by the time it's over, it'll be settled in. I, I learned so much from these horses. I thank God I wish I was like this horse. That I would just wait until the weight of your presence shifts in my life and I would do something to respond to that. God, help me be like that. Help me to sense the shift in your weight, the still small voice. Uh, I talked about the flexing at the pole. He probably, because we've, we've changed cues, uh, but, but if I get him to flex the pole here, he will, eh, there we go, he'll immediately start going sideways. But I changed that to where now it's just, it's just this. Uh, I, I just wish I was like that with God. We said, we're going to start with this. Uh, this horse is over, you've got to see him going over teeter-totter bridges through water, under things, over things, dragging things. Uh, it's, it's, it's really cool, but it started just by me helping him think different and see himself different. That's what God does. If, if you do not know Christ, then you're living life as, as best you can and dealing with the best value you can you can put on yourself, but the reality is, and here, here's the point, uh, if, if God has the master plan for my life, it's best that I check with him on what I should be doing, where I should be going. Um, two most important days of your life, the day you're born and the day you find out why. And only God can tell you why. I believe that with all my heart. Only God has the answer to the why. So. Let's, let's close and, nope, I'm not asking you to come towards me, but you're trying. Oh, he, he did this cool thing. We were at Country Thunder. I was talking about finding your purpose, and we were in a round pen. So I said, this horse's purpose is to try to figure out what the weight on his back wants him to do, similar to what I just said. So I reached over, and I took the head stall off, and I just pointed one way he'd go that way, pointed the other way he'd go that way. And I said, he's just trying to say, I, I think that's what you want me to do. There was a pedestal set up in there that I had used earlier. I pointed, and it was kind of towards the pedestal. He sees the pedestal. I don't have any way to tell him any different. He heads right to the pedestal, gets on it, and stands. And, and it became the greatest part of that service to me. Because I said, you know what? This horse just now did not do what I wanted it to do. But the horse did its best to do what he thought I wanted it to do. And if I get a horse that tries its best, and you know, I don't have all the answers, this is what I think. And I'm going to do something that I think is the right thing. I'm going to reward him every time. Don't get all upset because you don't have a nail. You know, I didn't do this perfect. Uh, but God help me to do it right. So let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, God, I, I pray for every person here. I, I pray for those who have a value that has been placed on them or they placed on themselves that keeps them pushed down. 
I, I, I pray for those who, who battle with a, a sense of, of worthlessness. I pray for those that have been carrying around a lot of trash. Uh, maybe trash that, that they acquired or trash that they placed on their life. God, would you help us to see that you not only give us a new identity, but you give us purpose and you show us that you don't have any intention of us to carry trash or feel like we have no worth at all. But God, help us to see your worth on our lives. That you who have begun a good work in us are also well able to perform it. God, I, I thank you for, for every person here. If you're here and you don't know Christ, I would love to pray with you. If you're here, you're just struggling. Uh, if you hear you, 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 you say, you know what, I, I, I knew it, man, I've gotten, gotten away from it. Um, I would love to pray with you. But God, I pray for every, every person here. And Lord, I pray that you would transform hearts and, and lives and minds and give us a purpose in Jesus' name. Um, I, I, I could probably do this here. This is actually, this is actually my hat. That's, that's my hat. My wife tells me, honey, you can't wear that hat doing, doing cowboy shoes. She said, this is a cool hat. This is the most comfortable hat. Now, don't you think this is like, so she got me this one. It's getting there. She's probably going to have me change it before long. But uh, I, you guys up here understand, that's, that's the better hat. So, but don't, don't, this is, this is just being recorded, so we might edit that out, is what my wife says. <laughs> so. Kayla, Pastor, you want to close? Thank you guys very, very much. Yes, let, let me do this, if, if, uh, I have you got some of you guys know him. Great. And we'll we'll take we'll take questions. Yes. is, is uh, in, in the training program, it's all, it's called natural horsemanship. People call it horse whispering. I don't like the term. I really don't, but, I, you know, the media loves it um, because it sounds like it did something mystical. But it's, it's, it's really letting that horse know that you're, you're a, a, a gracious um, senior partner. And, uh, and, and, and horses and animals will respond to that. So thank you. Anybody else? Yes. Yes, uh, so, so the, the, the work in Florence, so that program began in 2012. Uh, we maxed out at 980 wild horses. Right now we have, uh, we have more burros and horses. But, uh, and so, so that's how it began. And I trained inmates on how to train wild horses. And the surprise for me, the pleasant surprise, well, I, I really felt like both would be changed. But the surprise was just how radically the inmates' lives are, are changed. When we started, I would look for guys that had some horse experience. Now, almost the opposite. Uh, some of the people come in with no horse experience, say, here's how you start. They don't have bad habits to unlearn, all those things. So, yes, sir. Um, how, how was Starbucks name, uh, like, how did you find that name? S Starbuck <laughs> is, 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 that's okay, because everybody, you know, so Starbucks is the coffee. So he's kind of a coffee-colored horse with cream, okay? Uh, but uh, are you sure you weren't reading Moby Dick? So uh, well, that's where I was going with this. So so Starbuck was a character on on Moby Dick. He was a Mennonite uh, guy on Moby Dick, and also.
Galaxy. It was a uh, uh, Starbuck was uh, uh, the mermaid. So you know, it was one of the anyway one of the space. So, so there were a couple of reasons. So I like I like Starbuck, and I checked with him, and he went. Oh. Like <laughs> yes. He probably would if I let him. But as you can see, I don't want any caffeine. On, 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 on. I think uh, maybe I had a, should have gave him some Benadryl or something before he came up. So he said, yes. What's that? You are. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You, when, when everything's over, we'll talk about there. Yes, sir. How much responsibility do the inmates have over their work? Great question. So what I want the inmates to do is have... I want them to have, I've got about 20 inmates and about 35 horses. Some of those inmates are, are training burrows, so I want in, each inmate to have about two horses. And some of them are learning how to train, some of them are finishing up. So, so if they have two horses, I want them to bond with that horse. And they, they come in. Nobody is too good to clean stalls. You do not ever become too good to clean stalls. So that's kind of the common denominator. They're responsible for their tack, they're responsible for their horse, they're responsible for care. I want them to work with one horse, then put it up, and then work with another horse. So they have responsibility. Here's what I found, especially with the Mustangs. They'll bond with that inmate. Somebody else walks up and they go, oh man, that guy didn't hurt me, but you might be going to kill me. So every Friday they swap out and they work with somebody else's horse. So, uh, yes? Do you like working with this horse? What's that? I love it. I do. I like working with this horse. I, I have, other than the than the than the politics, uh, I have a, a federally funded program run by the state of Arizona inside a prison. So other than the politics of it, I I, I have a I have a great job. But everybody, you have politics anymore? Yes. Do the inmates after they get out, if they've been in the program and they get released, do they get to continue? Can they continue working with the program on a volunteer? They or can't. They we're trying to change that where I can hire them. Now, what I'll do, though, on a personal level, I will have them volunteer at events that I'm doing. Uh, so I'll do, I'll do expos. And, and I'll also tell them, let's say, here's how to stay in touch with me if you want to. Uh, on my way up here, I got a call from an inmate that got out about a year and a half ago in Flagstaff. Mr. Helm, I just want to touch base and let you know that I'm, that I'm doing, doing well. Uh, I'll catch that. Uh, one, we, we had... Since the program started, I know of one inmate that has reoffended and returned to prison. Wow. So that's six years. I think if you dug deeper, we'd probably find one or two, but I know of one. Now, it sounds like a, it is a great statistic. I know of three that are dead. So, so it, it is rough for these guys when they, when they get out. Uh, and they, they've got to readjust, and, and it's finding that, that, you know, the reconnecting with some of the old friends, yes. Well, you know, as far as using the horse, um, I, I, I want people to, to, to make those, those connections. So, so a horse is a, a large animal, so, so it really is quite moving when, when they start really making that connection and bonding. Some of the inmates that in, the, in the program have never really bonded. And so they start bonding with a horse, so that opens up the door for, for people. Yes, sir? And that's a great point. No, you didn't miss it. I didn't say it, but but, but trust is, is is central on both parts. I, I, I the horse got to start trusting me, but I've got to trust the horse, and so uh, so, so that that is critical. And what happens with inmates is is they they don't trust, and suddenly they've got this large animal uh, that uh, that they they have to have it's one step at a time. It's all progress. It's it's, it's building on successes. Yes. Sometimes, but here's what the, they look at it. The horse came out of the wild. It's in captivity, had to learn a new way of living so that it could function well in this new life. So they have mixed emotions. They think, hey, this horse will be a great home. So they kind of see there, someday I'm going to be like this horse. I'm going to get out and have an opportunity to have a new life. It doesn't matter how old the horse is. Yeah. Not really. They can still learn. They, they can still learn. We, we've had uh, uh, the... 
Bloody Basin Ranch, it was actually Verde Hot Springs Ranch, um, Red Creek, for those of you that are in, you know about that area. We had one horse, 11-year-old, uh, Grulia, went to, it was older, we brought it over, and that horse just exceeded all the others. And so they got that horse and called and said, that's my top ranch horse. Border Patrol uh, got one that was, they came down to look from the northern states, so from uh, Washington State, and I think that was Montana. Uh, the, they came down and we were showing the horse. They saw this one horse that was 10 years old and had like 20 rides on it, but it was already surpassing a lot of the younger horses. So uh, they said, we want that horse. And so he called me about uh, probably a month later, said we just did a 25 mile, uh, two or three day event. He said, come back in, all the other horses are laying down. My horse is ready to go. There. So, uh, so, the, so, and the older I get, that just makes me feel really good, you know. Yeah, you young. However, we have, we have some three and four year olds now, and so it does remind me sometimes there is a the learning curve. It's it's, it's quicker with the three and four year olds. But, uh, yes, sir. Okay. You know, you can only do one question. No, I'm just joking. So, my, it is my personal horse. I have three horses, and your second. Happened to worst injury, death. <laughs> to, to this horse? Oh, he he hasn't died. Um, yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was my Easter Sunday message, and it really, really worked out well. Uh, <laughs> the, he really he. That's a great question. I, there has been no injury. Since I've had him, that has, that has even even lamed him up. The Mustangs are pretty tough. They just have their their, their tough hoof bone. So uh, he's been. We did a we did an extreme ride through the Superstition Mountains, and I mean you're in in rocks and canyons, and and he was like a mountain goat, just boom 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 boom. So yes. He's never bit me. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, he's not he's not a, a, a biter at all. I've got another, I've got an Appaloosa that doesn't bite me, but he wants attention. Yeah. Pulling up my clothes all the time. And, uh, but nope, never, never bit me. So, yes. Have I been kicked? I'm trying to think how many times. <laughs> yeah, by horses, donkeys. Uh, I've had uh, all horse related. This should be a great encouragement. Uh, ACL popped totally loose in this leg. It just flopped. Uh, broken leg on the uh, uh, busted rib. I got a metal plate in this wrist. Had a broken jaw. Uh, uh, lost a number of toenails over the years. <laughs> Just oh. so. Other than that, it's it's, it's pretty healthy. Yeah, it's <laughs> Here's another question, doctor. Yes. 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 Go ahead. Yes. Uh, I have a friend who's in Florence, and so how do they go about contacting you to get on your program? Yeah, if they're in Florence. If they're in Florence prison, now Florence, we have we have twenty thousand inmates at Florence, distributed over five prisons. So Florence itself, Arizona State Prison, Florence. If they're on that and they're they can get on North Unit or apply. If they're in another unit and they're and they can apply, sometimes we can get them transferred. So even if they're in like an Iman, mm -hmm. uh, some of those uh, depends. On uh, if, if if it's if it's max, we can't. I can work up to level three. There's starts level one, trustee level three. They have to have constant supervision. I can get up to level three. So they can certainly uh, they can write a letter. They can write a letter to me. It's called an inmate letter. They would need to check with their corrections officer. Say I'd like to write a letter to Mr. Helm. Yes. Springs Ranch between Camp Verde and Strawberry. My granddad ran the Fossil Creek. You've been by Fossil Creek? There's a flume system through there. My granddad ran that flume system when I was a kid. And my dad worked for Randall's Ranch over the hill. So, and then uh, family split up. Uh, so when I was seven, uh, CPS came in and took everybody. And said I was then sent to grandparents in Safford. That was a working ranch. We had thoroughbred race horses, cotton, alfalfa, cattle. So that's probably where I learned to ride more than any other, uh, any other place. And then I ran away from there at 15 
and I ended up working training horses and, and cottonwood, and so I stayed with horses ever. So it's been kind of woven through my whole life. Uh, I got certified as a horse trainer in 2011. When did you start Mustang? 94, 1994. Yes. Yes. How did you get started working with the inmates and going into I was I was in I was in Kentucky. I was pastoring at that time, and I was not in Kentucky being certified as a horse trainer. I thought, what in the world am I doing? Being certified, and so I get a call from the Bureau of Land Management. I already I was doing clinics for them on how to gentle wild horses. I've been doing that for years. So I would do like 12, 15 horses at a weekend. And so they, I get a call. So the prison is looking at starting a uh, wild horse program, inmate program. When you get back, would you consider being a consultant just coming out and helping us? And I would love to. And so then I uh, got to think about it and praying about it. I thought, I think I'm going to throw my name in that. So that's how it, it all got, got started. Um, I was doing clinics on how to gentle a wild horse in Apache Junction. An entourage of people came from the prison, and this horse made me look good. <laughs> I thought, thank God. I've had some of them that, you know, at the end of an hour, they're snorting. This one would, came in wild. And uh, at the end of it, I had a, a lasso loop just loosely around the horse's neck or standing next to me. And so at the end of that, they said, please apply. So, yes. Uh, what's the difference in training a mule and a horse? Um, a, a horse will try to do what you want it to do. A mule wants to see your resume first. <laughs> What gives you the right to tell me what to do? That's the big difference. They, hey, who are you? Know, um, big difference is donkeys and mules have to, they have to process it. They have to think about it. They're much more cautious. So, uh, so when, a good example, when we have horses come in out of the wild, the, the, the semi will come, will unload them. They're usually thirsty. They've been on the road for eight hours or so. And the horses will trot up and drink. The burrows will come out, they'll see the water, they will circle it two or three times. One will cautiously go up and drink and then the others will join it. They, they just have to process that. And so you really start pushing a mule or, or a donkey. So somebody once said horses will remember everything and forgive everything. Mules and donkeys will remember everything and forgive nothing. And uh, one of the things about mules and donkeys, their peripheral vision, they can see all four feet at the same time, which makes them really good as far as sure-footed, but if they're going to kick you, they see all four feet at the same time. <laughs> so, uh, they're usually... Uh, in, all, they, in all fairness, a mule or a donkey, though, once they bond with you, they will literally kill for you. Yeah. I, I've got an example. If you got, I, I know this is going a while. Uh, had a lady, she adopted, a, adopted a, a, a burrow and took it home, had it there for a while, and this other uh, domestic burrow uh, attacked her and came right at her, teeth bared, and her, her, the burrow she adopted ran in between her and fought off the other burrow and sat on her and wouldn't let that burrow, other burrow get close until it was, it was safe. People adopt them for guard animals yeah, yeah. Uh, with sheep and llamas and goats, cattle as well. So they, you're exactly right. They are extremely loyal and by nature protective. Anybody else? I know most of you are probably fasting anyway. But, uh, well, I've been looking forward to this. This really, we had, we had a, a great man camp, but I was looking, looking for this is one of the highlights of the, of the weekend and one of, one of my highlights of the, of the summer. So, uh, so thank you guys for thank being, you. being very great. Here.
And we also thank you, Lord, for the fellowship that we can have together. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.